Hi, all you cool cats and kittens. Um, welcome to the second half of our genetics introduction. So if you remember where we last left off, I asked you guys to take a look at um, the following terms because we're going to be using them a ton when we talk about genetics. So let's look into this a little bit deeper as we get into really what these words mean and how we could use them appropriately. So keep in mind when we're talking about someone's genetic makeup, we're gonna use letters. Now, are there actual like alphabetical letters inside of you? No, we're using that to represent different alleles. This way we can kind of separate things that are um, dominant. We're gonna use a capital letter. That kind of just makes sense, like a big dominant capital letter versus a lowercase um, recessive letter. So for example, if we were gonna talk about the um, gene for having freckles, Freckles is a dominant trait. So if somebody was homozygous dominant, meaning homo, we talked about homo before, homo means the same. So a homozygous person or homozygous genes, a genotype is going to have the same letters. So somebody who's homozygous dominant for freckles would have two capital letters. Um, now I just could pick any letter. It doesn't matter. The letter is irrelevant because it's not actually the letter that's like sitting inside of your little cell but we're going to pick any letter usually they pick a letter that um the trait starts with so if it's freckles they might pick f but i just showed you an example here with the letter a so homozygous dominant someone would have two capital a's if someone was homozygous remember homo means the same but they were recessive they would have two lowercase letters so if i did not have freckles i would have two lowercase letters representing my two recessive alleles now, the last example is the third word that um, I asked you guys to look into, heterozygous. Now, remember, we've used hetero before as well, and hetero just means different. So, homozygous, the same letters, big, big, or little, little. Heterozygous is someone with two different alleles. So, you have both the dominant allele and the recessive allele, big A, little a. Now, here's my question. What trait would that person show? If they have the recessive allele and the dominant allele, would they show the dominant one or would they show the recessive? Which one is going to mask the other? Well, the dominant allele is going to be the one that's shown if you have both. Somebody with this genotype is only gonna show a recessive trait, no freckles. Somebody with this genotype, capital A, capital A, is going to have freckles because they have the dominant allele. And someone who's heterozygous is going to show the dominant trait because they also have the dominant allele and it masks that recessive one. So keep in mind, all of these letters we're talking about are really just the genotype. Think genotype sounds like genes. So when I'm talking about your genetic makeup, your genes, the alleles that you have as an organism, I'm talking about your genotype. It makes sense, it kind of even sounds like genes. So when we say genotype, we're talking about what alleles did you inherit from your parents? So if you're looking at this example here of this um, fly, the genotype for this fly would be these two alleles for whatever gene, I guess, eye color that this is representing. Okay. And let's imagine for a minute, we're going to use um, the letter G for this fly. And this fly is big G, little g. Now, would that be heterozygous or homozygous? They have a big G and a little g, they're going to be heterozygous, different, right? Big and little. Would they show the dominant trait or the recessive trait if they're big G, little g? Recessive. Oh, no, wait, sorry. Dominant. I don't know why I said that. Dominant, because the dominant one is going to mask that recessive trait. So let's pretend for this um, example, green eyes is the dominant trait. So this fly is going to have a phenotype. It's green eyes. So what does that word mean, phenotype, compared to this word genotype? I want you to think genes, genotype. Phenotype, physical appearance. We love our stuttering and alliteration, so let's keep that trend going on here, even in online learning. Phenotype, physical appearance. Phenotype, physical appearance. So if this bunny's genotype with big A, big A, it is two dominant alleles for having um, ear length, okay, that gene. Its phenotype 
would be what traits do we see? What are the observable physical characteristics that this organism has because of those genes? So this bunny has super long ears. Why? Sorry, just so popular. Why does this bunny have super long ears? Because of its genes. So phenotype, physical appearance, genotype, genes. Um, in this example, we're just imagining that long ears are dominant, and because it's homozygous dominant, this bunny's going to have long ears. So if we looked at this uh, flower example, when we go back to the pea plants that Mendel experimented with, he had white pea plant flowers, he had purple pea plant, flo pea, pea plant flowers. And if you remember, what happened when he crossed a purple and a white? What did he get? He got a purple baby. What does that tell you? What phenotype is dominant? What physical trait is dominant? What color? Purple. Purple is the phenotype of this flower. Now, what could the um, genotype of this flower be? Let's pretend like this flower is the offspring of a purple mom and a white dad, okay? That means that it got one dominant allele and one recessive allele. What would the genotype of this flower be if we were going to use um, the letter P for pea plant or, or purple or whatever? Would it be big P, big P, little P, little P, big P, little P? The genotype would probably be big P, little P because it got a little P from its white dad and a big dominant P from its purple mother. So keep these words in mind as we kind of sum up genetics here, our introduction to the genetics. Mendel was awesome. Not only was he a grade A hottie, but his experiment was critical in determining a lot of the principles about heredity and inheritance that we now know are true. He didn't use the words DNA and chromosomes and genes and genotype. He didn't know that yet. But he did figure out that things don't just blend together. You don't put a purple and a white flower together and get like a light purple flower. You get dominant versus recessive. You get physical traits that are seen because of these genetic components that he called factors. So now we know that many things um, are true based upon these experiments. So things like, oof, look at this picture, sorry. Should have warned you. Being allergic to poison ivy. Are you allergic to poison ivy? I am, I've had it. So bad so many times in my life that's a genetic trait some people are not um, prone to being responding to poison ivy so you could get the genotype that means you have the alleles to be allergic to it and your phenotype would be that this happens to you when you come in contact with um, poison ivy take a look at this can you read what number that is squint a little okay if you can read that I think it's a 16 then you're probably not colorblind and if you can't read that and it all just looks like one big thing, then you might be red, green, colorblind. That's a genetic trait that you inherit from your parent to parents. Now, this one's a little weird because it's sex linked. Boys are more likely to be colorblind. And we'll get into that if we feel comfortable with this online thing. But um, this is another one where you inherit genes. You inherit these alleles from your parents and your phenotype might be colorblind or not colorblind. Um, so just to kind of go more into the colorblindness. You can have different kinds but still the phenotype is what traits do you have because of those genes i'm not colorblind so my phenotype is normal vision all right and my last example here check out these people what's going on with them they are albino everyone has the gene to be albino but what alleles did i get well i got i got um dominant alleles from my parents because i'm not albino so how do you become albino? If you inherit the recessive alleles, then you're going to be um, someone who demonstrates albinism. So once again, we're talking about genotype, genetic components, phenotype, your physical appearance. So if we put all of these things together, I think that's the end of my thing. Great. Um, I want you guys to feel really comfortable with using those words. Okay. So to sum up, what we talked about today. Take a look at this example. So if you guys looked at these three um, fictional birds, I want you to kind of differentiate between the terms that we've used of genotype, phenotype, 
homozygous, heterozygous, um, and even to understand the difference between how we show a dominant allele versus a recessive allele. So if you take a look at this um, first bird, second bird, third bird here, I want you guys to focus on this middle one. If I was gonna ask you, what is the genotype of this second bird, what would you say? And if I was going to ask you, what is the phenotype of this second bird, what would you say? Lastly, based on what you're seeing in this picture, which color would you say is the dominant allele for um, bird color for this gene? What color would be dominant? If we were going to look at um, the letters that they used, how would you know which one is the dominant trait? All right, so hopefully this makes a um, good bit of sense to you guys. And if not, feel free to email me with questions or um, send me some comments on Google Classroom, whatever works for you. Uh, I miss you. I hope you have a wonderful day. And um, just let me know if you guys need anything at all.